Hey everyone, this is Teresa V and this is the place to be if you're a sensitive world changer who wants to create a purpose-filled life that you love. Today we're talking about going to the hardware store for milk and it means that we go to a place for something that we know we can't get there. Sensitives and empaths do this a lot, a lot. And you would think that it's a behavior that would be easily overcome, but it's actually not. This is a behavioral pattern that we fall into very, very easily, simply because we are built to see people's full potential. We are built to feel the entirety of their soul and to help hold that vision for them so that they can realize their purpose for being here. And so as sensitives, as empaths, very often we do have this ability to see people or feel people or hold them at the level of their soul. But then what happens in the 3D and 4D world is we start treating them as if we're speaking to the person who has realized their full potential. What we need to do is realize that we have this gift and ability and then start interacting with the person who is actually in front of us. And at the point that they are in their growth and development and soul's journey, right in that moment. People will always show you exactly who they are very soon after meeting them. And we do a couple of different things. The first thing is we have an intuitive hit about who this person is or how they show up in the world. And if it's a good intuitive hit, we're more likely to go with it. If it's an intuitive hit that we're uncomfortable with or that reflects the other person negatively, very often we try to talk ourselves out of it or to convince ourselves that we are not giving this person a fair chance. I've learned and what we all learn over time is that that interaction is very often completely indicative of who this person is on the greater scale. Well, in the first five minutes that you met them, what did your intuition say? People will always show you exactly who they are right away. Believe them. Growth in our soul's journey is kind of like the Abraham Hicks emotional scale, right? So you wouldn't expect somebody to go from feeling really angry to feelings of joy and bliss within a split second, right? You work your way up the emotional scale to get to those feelings of joy and bliss. You move through many, many different feelings before you can get there and maintain it. And this is the way our soul's growth is as well. We move through many different phases and many different stages, and this doesn't make anyone better or worse than anyone else. What we're talking about here is just to be present with the person exactly as they're presenting at the moment in time that you're interacting with them and know that that's who they are now. And if they choose to keep growing and evolving, then they will be changing as time goes on. But that this change and this growth doesn't happen without a lot of work, without a lot of dedication. I mean, think about anything you've done in your life. If you really wanted to create great result, it did take dedication, it took work, and it took devotion. For many sensitives, our first experience with this is in our family of origin. We expect our family of origin to show up the way we need them to show up. And we've had the experience, most of us, of that not being the case. We expect them to be able to anticipate our needs and to take care of them before we even know what they are. Because that's something that's built into us as empaths. We know what people need and we anticipate their needs and we sometimes take care of them before they even know what their needs are. However, most likely when we were born, the the statistics said there was one highly sensitive person in every family, right? So it's like a one in five situation. So chances are you might have been the only one in your family of origin. And then we expect other people to show up the way we show up. And that's not the case. They don't function the way we function. A lot of times we've expected people to be able to listen to what we're going through and give us advice, but we go to people who have shown us over and over again that they cannot listen. They are not able to sit and listen and process what we're saying and be present with us. They're on their phones, they're talking about something else, they're changing the subject, they're just telling you what to do when all you want is to be heard. But many of us keep going back to those same people and we keep giving them another chance 
for a couple of reasons. We expect, because we're doing a lot of self-growth work, that they'll be working to change these things about themselves, that they'll be growing in their capacity to hold space for us based on the experience of last time. And that's not always the case. If a person is working to grow and change and evolve, yes, but maybe not. They've showed you exactly who they are. So, you know, if you keep going back to this person, going to the hardware store for milk and expecting a different result, then that's on you. It actually becomes unfair of us to expect them to show up any differently than the way they are in that moment expecting that of them, setting them up for failure, and then being disappointed by them. That's not fair to people because they don't know any different. They don't know. And we keep going back and having our expectations stomped on. The other reason we do this a lot is because sensitives fear being lonely. We fear being alone and left. It's almost like the worst possible thing for many of us to have all of the people removed from our lives and to be sitting in a room by ourselves with no one to call, no one to talk to, even if we tend to isolate a little bit, as long as we know there's somebody out there to reach out to, it makes us feel better. So that's one of our biggest fears. And so we sometimes keep people around who we know aren't the right people for us or they don't show up the way we need them to show up, but we keep them around to avoid letting them go and feeling the loneliness, feeling that in-between stage where there might not be people there for us. But the truth is, are these people really there for us anyway in the way we need them to be? When we release them of that obligation, of that duty that they don't necessarily even want, we make a space for someone to come in who holds the right energy for us at the moment in time in our own evolution. So when we do stop going to the places where we can't get what we need, when we just admit that and let it be okay, then we'll stop wanting to go there. The universe, the divine, our higher self can just say, okay, well now here is the next thing that's right for you right now. But it requires us to let go first. If there's no room for something new to come in, it can't come in. In all fairness, you wouldn't expect a two-year-old to drive you to work. There's so many reasons why a two-year-old wouldn't be able to do that. When we show up to people and, and expect them to hold space for us in the way we need space held, when they are not capable of doing that, that's exactly what we're expecting. We're expecting the impossible. And not only is it unfair to them to have expectations held that they can't meet for various reasons, but it's also unfair to us because we're not giving ourselves the opportunity to get what we actually do need. The simplest way for us to start to change some of this is to tell people what we need or actually tell them what we expect of them and then give them the opportunity to tell us if this is possible or not. We don't, as sensitive people, often articulate what we need. We're so used to being the one that people come to because they need something, because we hold the space. And then when we get upset at other people, even if we keep that in, because they're not showing up the way we want them to, it is unfair. So for the rest of the month, try articulating what you need and what you desire from your friends, from your family, from those that are around you, and see if they're willing to do that. See if they're willing to rise to the occasion. And that will give you good information for how to move forward in this relationship. And it opens a whole Whole new dialogue or if this is someone who has reached their growth potential for now and you still might love them and keep them in your life but you stop going to the hardware store for milk you stop expecting things of them that they are not capable of giving you at this moment in time and then that opens the door for people who can to come in so play with this for the rest of the month. See how it goes. It's especially important for us at the time of the holidays when we're getting together with so many people that we don't see often and who we have expectations of and who have expectations of us. So try this small shift in perspective and see what happens over this holiday season. If you're feeling you would like even more support around surviving the holiday season as a sensitive 
then check out the workshop that's happening November 15th, the Sensitive's Holiday Survival Guide. We'll have great information, tools you can use right away, tools that I've used to completely change my holiday season so that I can be more present and that I can enjoy myself even more. I've seen these tools work for many, many sensitives. I invite you to be there with us to get your own toolkit that you can use this holiday season and throughout the coming year. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sending you so much love and joy and that you enjoy the holiday season wherever it may take you. Bye everybody.